welcome back mystery lovers yes i'm back with another of my african tale real mystery today we're going to be talking about the teenager and what happened to her before i get into the story i have to quickly explain this to you so you can understand in africa we use the rivers for a lot of things we fetch drinking water we bait in it, we go for fishing, and so many more. We also use it as transportation for agriculture, ETC. So the rivers are very important. And in the olden days, that's all we had. Modern day, now you can have your water connected at home and all of that. Before, you have to go to the stream to fetch water for cooking, for baiting, and everything. So... It is a normal thing as a child growing up, you look forward to when you will grab your jerry can and go to the stream and fetch water like every other person in the community or your neighbors or your elder brothers and sisters as they do. So it is a fun thing as an African child growing up. Everybody look forward to going to the stream, going to the river to fetch water. So in this family, we will call this girl Sonia. Sonia is from a big family. She has brothers and sisters. She was the second to the last child in her family. She had just a younger sister that she was older than. Every other person was older than her. So she grew up seeing her elder brothers and sisters going to the stream to fetch water. They swim and, you know, the brothers will go with like this 20 liters um, jerry can. The sisters will carry like paint buckets and things like that. And she really loved it. She would run along with them going to the stream. So she hoped that she would also do this when she is old enough. Fast forward many years later. Sonia is now a teenager. Most of her brothers and sisters, they've left the village. They've moved into the bigger cities to go further their education because in Africa, most of the universities and, you know, college of educations and things like that are in the main cities, okay? So if you live in the village area, so you have to go to, you know, like living from a rural area to urban area to further education, so on and so forth, or get a good job and you know city life is always different from the village life and all of that so all her brothers and sisters they've gone to the city to further their education now she was responsible for her younger ones which is she had just one younger sister like i said and others were relatives you know kids from her relations that's something that is common in africa we love living together. So you have like your cousins, uncles, children, and aunties, children, all of that in one house. Okay, so she had cousin, her cousins living with them, but she, now she was the oldest among everybody. So she was responsible for the cooking, going to the market to buy food stuffs, coming back home, preparing food, go fetching water, going into the forest to fetch firewoods, so on and so forth. So on this blessed day, she had to go to school. Now she was in high school, what we mostly call secondary school in Africa. So she had prepared breakfast and everything. But now she had to prepare some of the traditional food, which is called fufu. And fufu is something that is prepared with cassava and you need a lot of water. The process of washing, trying to uh, sieve the water out and then getting into cooking it, then pounding it and all of that. So you need a lot of water in the house. And she had to go for practice in school that evening. So she said, okay, let her rush with one of the 20 liter jerry cans to the stream to fetch water that she can use to cook before she goes for her practice in school. Okay, like that's for sports that they do in the evenings. So she took this 20 liter jerry can and she was just walking and singing and, you know, swinging the jerry can and going towards the river, which is something she has done from when she was small. Like I said, she used to go with her elder ones. And she, be, she being a teenager, 
she used to go to the stream all by herself also. She has done this a million times. So it was a normal thing. As she walked through the bush part where you have cassava farms, yam, and all those other stuffs along the road as she walked through the cassava farms and yam farms and plantain plantations and all of that going towards the river she was just singing and using the 20 liter jerry can to heat the grasses as she is going now in the afternoon time the river this particular river because her community they have different rivers and lakes and so on so you could choose to go to the lake to get water you could choose to go to the river it's your choice so it is known that this particular river has a story of weird things weird creatures entities that the people have seen and most times people say they see them in the afternoon when the sun is in the middle of the sky when the sun is hot now if you're not an african you might not understand how hot the sun can get in africa okay so when the sun is in the middle of the sky, it is blasting away. The rivers are quiet, calm, you know, so it is normal. So she walked and she was getting closer and closer and closer to the river. When she came face to face with the river where she could see the river, now there is a step that is made with mud. Because the river is at least like a slopey, it is kind of slopey, you know, you have to go down. When you get to the river um, edge, you have to descend down before you can fetch the water. You have a few meters to go down. So when she got to that spot, she stopped because all of a sudden there was this strange wind blowing, not around everywhere, which when it's windy you see the trees the leaves everything but this was just in a particular like the wind was moving in a particular way and she could see something in the water but this thing was not it seemed like the thing was moving with the wind and according to her she froze she didn't understand what she was saying she was trying to process what she was saying she couldn't run she couldn't scream she was just gripped with fear so she stood and she was just looking and the more she was looking she could not really make sense of what this thing was this entity it looked it, it had a shape of a human it had very long hair and a good way for me to describe it is like the asian hair like the chinese or so you know this very straight dark long hair but if it, it was masculine in nature and the hair was so dark that she said she has never seen any human with such dark hair and the length and the movement of this thing under the water it was not directly above it was under the water but not deep enough that she couldn't see it and it was moving and the wind was following it and it was not swimming in a straight manner and she said you could see up to the waist level then from there down you could not tell if there is a leg if it, it was just weird and it was just like a transparent human. That's how it looked. And this thing went across, was crossing the river. And she just stood there looking. And when it got to the other end of the river, she was thinking, okay, now at this point, it will come out of the water and run into the forest. If this is a human or if this is, she doesn't know what this is. But with the fear, she couldn't run, she couldn't shout, she couldn't do anything. She stood there watching when this wind and this um aberration she was seeing got to the edge of the river that's the bank of the river across from where she was standing it went through the bushes and you could see the leaves um the sorry the grasses and everything in the small trees that were by the side of the river were moving like swaying side to side but every other tree around was 
stagnant. There was no wind blowing. There was no leaf just in that area. And yet she could not see what that was. But that movement went up until it disappeared into the forest across. She said when she did not see that thing anymore, that was when she got herself, threw down her jerrycan and started running home. When she got home, she sat down and she could not even process what she saw. She didn't know how to tell anyone because will, will they believe her? She has heard of stories because when she and her siblings will be swimming, most times all those old women and men that passes through that uh, river to go to their farm paddling in their boat their wooden boat the, which we call the canoe they will always scream at them leave the water don't swim for so long there are things you people don't know happening leave the water but she never knew what 